Okay. And so here we are at our annual, uh, our annual community budget forum and uh, Q&A. This is really an opportunity at the very, very beginning of conversations related to next year's academic year budget. Um, and this year, of course, is every year is a little different, but this year is very different um, in that, of course, we're contending with the pandemic. And, and some. <laughs> while we always have uncertainty, um, this year I think we have even a little bit more uncertainty than we've had in the past. I'm going to share my screen with you. We have a very, very brief, very short PowerPoint presentation, but I think, I hope, um, important and informational nevertheless. So of course, we always start out um, with our strategic plan of, and our vision and our mission and our core beliefs. Everything that's included in our annual budget can be directly traced back uh, to our uh, core beliefs, our vision and our mission statement. We also have our strategic priorities, which this year have changed a bit. And of course, you can you can note in there um, that we've made some targeted changes. The strategic planning committee has made some targeted changes to make sure that we're attending to and supporting all of the various um, instructional uh, changes and modifications that have been made to uh, address the pandemic. So everything from creating and uh, maintaining and strengthening the remote learning platform, um, the, the hybrid approach to academic instruction, and all of the many health safety requirements um, that needed to be addressed this year um, that we haven't had to uh, in the past. So our, our strategic priorities uh, are very, very important, but I also want to draw attention to um, the fact that we continue uh, to work diligently uh, and, and very intentionally um, uh, to increase equity within the school district. And that's been very important. And I think that's also been brought to the forefront with regard to the challenges associated with the pandemic. In White Plains, we've been very fortunate in that our board has, uh, has been supportive and the district has been able to make sure that we have been breaking down barriers to be able to address needs of our children and our community, our family members uh, with regard to COVID-19 and um, of course, access to technology, access to the internet, access to, to food and um, literacy supplies, all of those types of things, we've, we've been very fortunate, but we've also made sure that that was a priority. And as we've talked about in the past, things that are made priorities are things that are resourced. And uh, we've been continuing to do that and, and looking forward into the next academic year and the next fiscal okay. cycle, um, we know that we're gonna have to be addressing these types of things as well. Also collaboration with our students, families and community members um, remains critical to everything that we do. And as we move through, I think um, the challenges and continue to move through the challenges associated with the pandemic, communication has been at the forefront of everything that we've tried to do in our community so that all of our community members know exactly what's happening, right? They know what we know. Um, and that has, uh, that, that, that I think has really helped us. Um, is it perfect? No, of course not. Uh, and we're always looking for ways to improve. We're accepting feedback from community members all the time. But I think that we've done, um, by and large, at least we've tried to do by and large, a, a, a very good job of communicating with our, uh, our community related to all of the types of things that arise literally as the Board of Education members know every single day. Um, so the, these have uh, certainly been challenging times, but we've been moving through it. We've been moving through it together, a lot of support. Um, we've seen a great deal of partnership and fellowship throughout the district. The reopening committee, I can't say enough about these folks uh, who have been working diligently every single week to make sure that we're addressing the needs in the school district. And it all comes back to the budget. It all comes back to being in a fiscally stable position to be able to address these needs. Um, and fortunately, so far, we've been able to do that. Now on this slide, um, what we wanted to do, and this is really up to the, the moment, right, And It's really just- 6 a.m. this morning. <laughs> give everybody a sense of, um, you know, obviously most folks, if not everybody is aware of the, the, the cases confirmed globally and, and the number of deaths globally. And, um, the, the entire world is really uh, facing these challenges um, and certainly the United States of America uh, is, is continuing to, to face these challenges and we know those of us who, who listen to the county executives update today, even in our region, we're seeing far more cases than we had in the last month 
And unfortunately, even deaths have been climbing again. So we are very much still in this scenario. We are very much still contending with COVID-19. Uh, again, community members know, trustees know that um, right up until today, this afternoon, um, unfortunately, we had a situation where at the high school, we have, a, we have one of our cohorts that needs to be remote now um, because of a COVID-19 uh, identified positive case. So lots to contend with, and I'll ask Anne, go ahead to just talk a little bit about this slide and some of the things that you're thinking about. Uh, I think as far as, you know, economic chaos, we know that unemployment has been, you know, at records, record highs, um, closing of businesses, you know, there's been no economic relief to, you know, government, school districts. You know, it's likely that, you know, commercial property values because of the closing of the businesses will decrease and all of that will will focus back on an impact to our, our local budget. Um, food insecurity, we see that our food pantries um, and, you know, the lines that we saw and continue to see each week uh, at George Washington uh, Elementary School specifically. Um, the educational insecurity, as we've talked about, you know, and just not having our students here every single day um, where they need to be. Uh, and the emotional stress and trauma um, and, the, and the safety concerns, you know, are people really following through and doing what they're supposed to do or wearing their masks and keeping socially distanced. But the federal government stimulus, that's key and that's still on hold. And that continues to remain a challenge for us because the level of uncertainty at the state level is, is directly connected to our level of uncertainty at the local district. Um, all, and these are all public school districts all throughout the state. So in, in New York, um, we know because the governor was very clear about this, uh, that without additional funding, that there, there are going to be significant reductions to the state budget, which will then of course trickle down and impact local school districts via state aid, whether it's foundation aid or whether it's BOCES expenditure driven aid, whether it's a combination. And of course, those of us who have uh, lived through the gap elimination adjustment from 2008, 2009, 2009, 2010, remember that these uh, challenging scenarios, even when there is an economic recovery on the national level, takes time for it to translate to a recovery at the state level, if it ever does. Monies lost in a budget are seldom replaced um, we know that even at the local level, once you lose something from a budget, it becomes very difficult because of the regular increases annually um, to be able to put those items back in. So we are watching very carefully. We have been, as you know, in our school district advocating strongly at the federal level um, for the federal government to intervene and to support states so that states uh, throughout the, well, the entire country really is not facing further uh, uh, reductions to these very services, which are really on the front lines of getting us back on our feet and getting us where we need to be. Um, in a time where we need schools to be able to reopen, we need children to be able to be back in their classrooms, to be able to get the support from not only their academic teachers and their support staff, but also from the clinicians and helping professionals. This is not the time to be talking about making reductions to those areas that are gonna be supportive of children. And uh, you know, when you think about infrastructure, when you think about healthcare, when you think about um, all of the basic safety me you know, measures all throughout the state, that, that's a real problem. So the state currently projects a, about a $14.5 billion decline um, and a $62 billion decline over the next four years. And that's significant. Um, and that's gonna be something that you know, we're, we're going to be contending with as we move forward. Districts, of course, have incurred millions of dollars in additional costs related to the reopening of school facilities. And that's really important for community members and taxpayers to understand. What we've had to do to be able to get us to where we are today has not been without a cost. So school districts are looking for ways to find efficiencies to be able to pay for those things like PPE, like the reconfiguration of facilities in order to welcome children back safely. Um, all of these things are, continue to have a price tag attached to them. And federal CARES money, that's a one year only expense so far. And it's been really only COVID related expenses. And there's a pretty um, uh, strict uh, gui guide framework, I'll, I'll say, of what's a COVID related um, expense. I don't know, Anne, if you wanted to elaborate on that. I know that that's something it's a challenge. Yeah, no, and the CARES funding only supports a very small amount of what we've incurred 
Um, and also uh, FEMA now has, you know, made it very clear that they're only reimbursing for the PPE costs that were associated with the closure and not costs associated with the reopening, which is quite significant change in what we were originally told. So we know that this is going to be a fiscal challenge at the state level. And, and what that means for us um, is that we have to look inward. Of course, we'll continue to lobby and we'll continue to be advocates uh, for our, our school district, particularly. Um, you know, we, we, we've always contended that we've not received enough White Plains dollars back uh, to support White Plains. Uh, but at the same time, we also have to have a, a very real recognition uh, that, that there is going to be a challenge even at the state level um, to balance their budget. For us, um, we adopted a, a, a budget that, or rather our state adopted budget had a $1.6 million reduction in state aid. Now, remember it, it was kind of like a shell game, right? So $1.6 million of regular state aid was removed and replaced with, with the pandemic adjustment, the pandemic aid adjustment. So realistically, um, the, the, you know, the money was moved back with a different heading, but the 1.6 that was moved out has been moved out ostensibly for good. And that's something that we need to recognize as we're moving forward. And again, that's not unique to White Plains. That was school districts all throughout the state. Additionally, a tw uh, an, another 20% of aid was, was withheld um, in July and August. Uh, and, you know, we, we've not yet received the, you know, that money. I know there's, there's conversations related to, oh, well, we're not, you know, that, that aid is not going to be withheld and, and we're going to move forward. But until the, those dollars flow to White Plains, in our minds, they're withheld. They're, they're paused. Well, however you want to couch it, they're not there. Um, when we talk about a 20% reduction in state aid for White Plains, in real numbers, it's about $6 million dollars. That's, and, and I've said that a million times and I'll say it a million more, um, those, are, those are numbers, those are significant numbers um, that, that require uh, us to really look very, very hard at our program and to make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can if we need to be able to um, withstand that type of a cut to be able to protect and preserve the program for our children. And you wanna talk about consumer or CPI? Sure. And in addition to the, you know, the $6 million reduction for this year, it's, you know, we certainly uh, expect that that will continue into 21-22. Um, the consumer price index, uh, which is a component of uh, setting the tax levy, um, is, you know, looking like it would be close to 0%, 0.7%. So that's a $2.5 million, equates to a $2.5 million loss in tax revenues. Um, you know, and then, you know, next year you have to look at the fact that we would continue to spend on PPE and costs associated with being in a hybrid and remote learning situation. And, and most importantly, you know, one of the things that, um, that the board and the administration did for this year to try to help with that budget gap or that potential budget gap is to really hold on those new initiatives for 2021 so that uh, we could um, assist in, in filling that for next year. Yeah, in hindsight, of course, is 2020, um, but you know, kudos to the Board of Education because as it turns out, by taking that position and taking that conservative stance back in the spring, it did position us in a much more solid uh, place fiscally to be able to contend with some of these expenses that, that couldn't be foreseen. Um, nobody could have known, you know, we could have predicted, we kind of thought, I was super duper optimistic that come, you know, September, October, November, um, perhaps we would have been in a different place. This is back in the spring, right? But eight months on, um, now certainly we know better uh, and have a much better handle, at least, you know, a better handle on what it is that we're contending with related to COVID-19 and what the likelihood is that these challenges are going to persist into at least the immediate future. Excuse me, Joe and, Joe and Ann, just the, the first bullet point. So when that state aid was replaced with federal dollars, it turns out that our hands were tied as well with that $1.6 million that they could only be used uh, for COVID-related expenses. Is that correct? So it wasn't like a one-for-one -one kind of a deal, right? Absolutely no. right. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. 
So again, you know, and this is something that uh, we're very proud of. Uh, I know the board is very proud of, and, and, and we will continue as we move forward to make sure we are taking a very conservative approach to budgeting and that we are looking at a multi-year uh, financial planning uh, uh, trajectory and that it's not a singular year. We have always said, and, and you know, I'm very proud of this personally, uh, and I know Anne is as well, uh, we know that none of us ever wants to see the great changes or the great additions or the great opportunities that we've been able to bring forward to our children um, reduced in any way. So we need to make sure that as we move forward, we continue to adhere to that conservative multi-year approach um, and make sure that we are in a solid position to get through this um, scenario without necessarily having to make significant reductions to the academic program. And those principles that we've used uh, as we've moved through these processes is to protect the instructional core, making sure that first and foremost, our children's program, our, their opportunities, all of them remain intact. Um, we are very quick to talk about needs versus wants, right? Just like in our own homes, there's lots of things we want, um, but what do we really need and what will we be able to preserve um, so that as we move forward, this is not something that we're, we're playing a game of sort of peaks and valleys or, or you know, cuts and ads. Um, we, we continuously look to find efficiencies and look for ways to shared services. We're doing that now as we have in the past. As you know, the Board of Education um, it has, uh, has sanctioned and, and we're, we're glad uh, the ability to look into many of our departments and our programs to make sure that they're functioning optimally and that um, we are in fact getting the, the most out of all of our um, investments in, in all of the areas within the organization. Preventing additional costs, making sure um, that we can look for shared services in, in, in everything that we do. So a lot of, a lot of uh, what we're talking about related to, for instance, potential COVID-19 testing. We're looking at ways if we had to go down that road, if that was something that became a requirement for school districts, how can school districts work together? How could we lev leverage the power of BOCES, these types of things? Um, and that's just an example, you know, from sort of the, the contemporary of what we're looking at. But there are all types of ways um, that we're sharing services and sharing costs or looking for community partners to get services for our children and for our community that don't necessarily come with a price tag. Program impact and delaying additions is, is again important. Again, needs versus wants. Um, certainly those, those positions that we have in our budget are positions that we know we need in order to move forward related to our, um, uh, related to our long range plan. But at the same time, when we're considering uh, potential reductions to our overall um, our overall budget uh, or, or state aid, we know that we have to be very careful with making those additions. And then, you know, reducing and restructuring, don't, don't eliminate. So what can we do within the organization if we needed to, um, to make sure that we're sort of moving our resources to where they need to be rather than necessarily eliminating. Um, so taking a very hard look at scheduling, taking a very hard look at a, a cohort size, taking a hard look at section size, all of these types of things are important to make sure that the, the organization is at the right size to be able to serve all of our children moving forward. So that's our, you know, sort of what we like to do every year is give you a little, a little bit of uh, uh, a picture, if you will, of where we are. Um, and then the, the, the rest of uh, this evening's meeting is really to think about or to hear from you thoughts, questions, recommendations. So. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and welcome everybody. I see, I believe there might be a chat in here too. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kane. Uh, which slide did you want me to go back to? No, that's fine. I'll just, when you share it, I'll just go back. Okay. Okay. No problem. Questions, comments, thoughts. Good evening, everybody. If I didn't say hi to you, uh, thanks for being here with us today. Okay, so as we, as we move forward into this year, just like we have in the past, there are going to be many, many opportunities for us to engage with our community members um, related to the next, next year's budget. What we know right now is that the, the tax levy cap is going to be considerably lower than 2%. 
that's important to remember. A lot of times, myself included, we talk about a 2% tax cap, and it's not that. It's 2% or less. As Ann was, so what, what are we thinking, Ann, about, about 0.7%? Yeah, close to 0%. Okay. So what we're going to be communicating with our community members, and for those of you watching later, um, or for those of you who are on this evening and talking and, and uh, talking with our neighbors and friends, um, is as we're moving forward, we have to really be very careful and very intentional in terms of our planning. You're not going to see from us, and just so that you, everyone knows this, you're not going to see recommendations for major additions to the academic program this year. We are very, very, and the Board of Education is very, very cognizant and sensitive to the challenges of, of what is, is really facing the community right now. Do we want to be, oh, and someone just put in here um, about a wish list. Yes, absolutely. We want to hear about the wish list because not all wishes necessarily come with a price tag that is, you know, out of, out of reach. Sometimes wish list items can just be achieved through reconfiguration, and we've done that in the past. So... This is not to say that folks shouldn't give us their ideas because we always want them, we always put them in, we always keep them in our long range thinking. Um, but just in terms of planning for what we're likely facing this year, um, it would be unlikely that we have any major recommendations for programmatic uh, increases. But let me just see right here, good evening. I have attended this meeting for many years. So one area I think we should be thinking about is teacher office hours. This is really missed in the current high school remote environment tough for teens to meet with their teachers and get support. Uh, thank you very, very much for that feedback. That's one of those types of items that I think we can talk about um, at reopening and talk about with, with our team um, and see how we could be able to achieve those types of things without necessarily incurring um, a major increase in expenses. That, thank you, Deidre, that, that's, that's really great. Anybody else? All right, well, I, I hope that this was um, the, if, if not the most pleasant, I hope it was the shortest meeting that you had today. I really wanna thank the trustees um, for taking time out of your schedule. James Dean, um, thank you so much always and, and everybody else who jumped on this evening. Um, if anybody has any last minute thoughts, other, uh, otherwise we'll, uh, we'll sign off. Thank you. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. See you soon. See ya.